Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Müller, I am a solution owner for finance and risk at SAP and responsible for the go-to-market of sustainability within finance departments. So in the next roughly 45 minutes, I would like to take you on an exploration journey along the path to the pre -lecture. But before getting started, I would like to take the time and explain to you why we set up this session and why we think this is an important session. Because we believe we are in a race we must win. And with that, we mean the climate crisis, first of all, a race we all must win. But I also mean us as a software provider, especially as the market leader for business software, as we have the duty to provide solutions to the market that can help our customers to win their race as well, to decarbonize their operations and to transform their industry in a rapidly changing business environment. Because we from SAP are a firm believer that both are connected, sustainable and successful business, and that both can be achieved at the same time. But how can s hana help now, right? And this is the question I would like to explore with you in this session. The path to the Green Ledger. And uh, in this journey, we basically will visit four areas. First, we will have a closer look on why this topic is or should be of importance for customers and partners, apart from the reasons I just mentioned. Then we will take a stroll to some use cases that are already available for finance departments, followed by the outlook where this will lead us eventually to, as you might have already guessed it, towards the Green Ledger. And at the end, I have prepared some next steps and some practical tips on what you can do in order to get on the journey now and to reach the Green Ledger eventually. But now, let's get finally going to check if and how financial consultants can really help saving the world. So why now? Why this push now to bring this on the agenda? And uh, I mean, to unroll this question would uh, probably already alone take up all the 45 minutes of this session, starting from market requirements all the way down to society arguments. But I would like to outline the why more from a policy and standard setup point of view first, and therefore have a look on what is currently happening in the regulatory and policy maker space globally. So what I brought with me are these two statements, one from the G20 website, where the G20 says, we reiterate our commitment to strengthening the long-term financial resilience of the international financial architecture by promoting sustainable capital flows. And the second one, a bit more crisp, capital needs to flow to key environmentally sustainable enterprises. Which I copied from the International Platform on Sustainable Finance, or IPSF, which is basically a group of policymakers that coordinate their activities and policies to make this statement a reality. Members are the European Union, China, United Kingdom, India, Japan, to just name a few. So they represent more than 50% of the world economy and 50% of the world population. So a group is quite some influence. And I believe these two statements are very interesting as they nicely illustrate what is on the global policymaker's mind to basically use the access to capital to make industry change, to implement an economic system that rewards sustainable businesses. So basically, these policies or these groups are aiming for a market framework, for a competitive market framework that prefers enterprises that can prove that they act more sustainable than others and by that carry less financial risk. That these sustainable or less risky enterprises can then access needed capital more easily or for better, with better conditions than others. For example, if you run a business relying on water, you might have better chances if you're operating in an area where there is no water shortage. Then compared to businesses operating in areas where Water is really, is really short and by that only available at higher cost. And to make this financial risk tangible and transparent for investors is the approach the policymakers are taking. And in that spirit, let's also have a look at IFRS, where traditionally companies get evaluated using the financial view only, which is defined by the International Accounting Standard Board, which is part of IFRS. And the slide you see here is actually a slide that originates from an IFRS. And what IFRS is doing now, and that is what is also illustrated here, is to add a sustainability disclosure 
next to the existing financial disclosures. So to complement the financial view with the sustainability view when valuating companies. And therefore, the IFRS founded the International Sustainability Standard Board at the UN Climate Conference in 2021, which is now setting the sustainability standard. And this combined view, sustainability and financial, shall be used going forward by capital market participants, for example, to evaluate and analyze companies. So what you see here is basically going back to these two initial statements that regulators want to promote capital flowing into sustainable enterprises. But it's not only IFRS or ISSB that is moving in this direction. This is actually happening worldwide. Like for example, the upcoming Corporate Sustainability and Reporting Directive from the European Union or the Enhancement and Standardization of Climate-Related Disclosures from the US Security and Exchange Commission. And these are only two examples, right? I mean, there are many more, like in the United Kingdom, like in India with the BSRS, or in Japan, or in Singapore, or in New Zealand. I mean, um, this list uh, is, is, is quite long, where we see these policies now popping up cross region, cross industry. But what all of these actually share is a strong influence of a, disclosure, of a disclosure framework that was established by the Financial Stability Board in 2015 and is called Task Force for Climate Related, fin for climate -related Financial Disclosure, or TCFD in short. And now look on what can SAP bring to this, uh, to this topic, right? And uh, I mean, who else can have or can show a proven track record to provide enterprise, so enterprise software that delivers audit proof results and processes. We are doing it for finance already for decades and now we need to shift for sustainability or carbon reporting. Moreover, we not only run compliant and auditable processes, but can also come up with strategic and operational decision foundations that can help enterprises across industries and regions to become better, more efficient and successful every day in what they do. But as TCFD seems, seems such a central piece in this rapidly growing policy and standard framework, I think it's worth to have a closer look on the TCFD mechanics and check how this is actually influencing those policies and standards. And TCFD and the other frameworks are basically structured in four categories. So starting from the bottom of this slide here. First of all, metrics and targets. This section includes a definition of KPI that companies will need to calculate and model and disclose going forward if they, for example, need to report under IFRS. Then the second section, the risk management, where companies get requested to formulate sustainability risk and opportunities, including the risk and opportunities impact on financial figures like revenue, cash flow, income or the balance sheet. And the third section is the strategy part. And here the standard asks entities to plan and forecast the risk impact on cost and revenue and cash flow. So not only to take a retrospective view, how the performance was in the last reporting period, but also take a forward looking view on how the impact might evolve for a company in the future. And last but not least, the governance section where reporting entities need to describe how the governance is set up, organized and managed around these risk and opportunities. Like in what frequency the board is being updated, who is responsible in the company for the governance of this framework, um, etc. But okay, let's take a little breath and stop here and start looking what this actually means for SAP solutions. And therefore, I would like to introduce you to Marlene let's say, the CFO of a company called Next Mobility. Marlene is very well aware of what is on the policymaker's mind and uh, about the policy and standard trends. And based on, based on that, she very likely has some demands or wishes. First of all, to become compliant now. For example, Sears ID will be, is planned to be active for fiscal year 2024 already. So large companies in the European Union need to report based on the CSRD rules already with the filing in 25. So Marlene wants to become compliant with this problem or with this task at hand. 
Secondly, Malena also wants to uh, uh, secure access to capital and increase the financial resilience of her enterprise. Moreover, she wants to enable and support companies' transition to a sustainable enterprise, not only to become compliant, but really help and support her company to transform and to make the change to become, to stay and become future ready. And lastly, eventually, Malena very likely wants to continue shareholder value, to ensure that investors are happy and that they continue to invest in her company and yeah, to keep the business rolling. So, how can we now help Malena already in 2023? So how does our solution offering look like? And as a guide for Malena and for this presentation, I illustrated a high-level solution architecture, especially for finance departments, on how we enable our portfolio to support customers and Malena along her requirements and journey. Again, let's roll this up from bottom to top. And the first layer you see at the bottom is the data capturing layer from where Malena can retrieve sustainability data as well as, as well as financial data. Also our Green Ledger is placed in this area. The second layer is the data structure and analysis layer with solutions to establish a central key figure ledger with SAP Sustainability Control Tower which helps to harmonize structure and clean sustainability data. For the risk and opportunity management, we have a solution called financial compliance management to bring the finance and sustainability data into a risk and opportunity context. And SAP Analytics Cloud to plan and manage the financial impact going forward. And the last layer in this middle, in this middle column is the disclosure layer, where today SAP Disclosure Management can help to collect the data required for disclosure write the disclosure reports in a collaborative way and send the data electronically via XBRL files to the authorities. And what you can see at the right column is the process coordination management layer, which we believe a very important one on how Malene can coordinate the various tasks, teams and data flows that is relevant when the organization prepares data for the period and close activity. So what we today do for finance at period end close, we will tomorrow need to do for sustainability. And this is especially important as we believe the transition towards a sustainable enterprise is not only a change from a solution view, but also from an organizational perspective, as many new teams need to manage new data points. And basically with this architecture, we reinvent the R, the word resource in ERP. We are going to expand the definition of resources to manage carbon emissions in the same way we are managing finance today. But what does this mean and, and how does that look like? And therefore I've selected four example use cases to demonstrate and visualize how we will achieve that. First, we will see how SAP can help to collect and structure reliable sustainability data. Second, I will show you how we can bring all the sustainability data into one central place to analyze, plan and also manage the data process. And next, and the third use case, is how we can eventually manage financial risk and opportunities resulting from the sustainability impact, a topic we see central when looking at policies and standards. And last one, how to monetize and evaluate the sustainability data eventually by combining financial with sustainability. But now let's start with the use case number one on how we can help Malena actually collect and structure the data. And therefore, I will start with the sustainability data view, what you see at the bottom here, and, and in particular with the solution called SAP Sustainability Footprint Management and Sustainability Data Exchange. So basically, Sustainability Footprint Management is a solution that helps Malena to collect product-related emissions from various sources, to, to structure those and to make them eventually available for reporting. So let's start from the left side here. And first of all, Sustainability Footprint Management, or SFM in short, can link to several data sources to extract data like from third-party sources via APIs, but it also offers standard connector to standard connectors to SAP sources, for example, to source material or activity related data from S4HANA, which is a very important aspect 
As we already heard before, that sustainability data is typically scattered around the enterprise. But now, after collecting the data, SFM can also assign a mission factor to that data, like industry averages, but also, for example, supplier-specific data when thinking of um, scope 3.1 emissions. And therefore, we can integrate a solution called Sustainability Data Exchange that you might have heard of before, but I will show you later in a little demo how that actually looks like. Looks like. So SFM complements the material data with emission, emission factors. And after we extracted the data, like the material data, and now have assigned an emission factor, the next step is to calculate the product footprints of the material that Malena companies produce. And therefore, we take data from various sectors like transportation, production, the already mentioned material. And that is actually the core of SFM, as it allows for customers to calculate the product footprint of materials that are manufactured. But SFM doesn't stop here. And SFM also provides this data for analytic purposes or can distribute the data into receiving applications like S4HANA. So that again, it can be used in S4HANA in operational processes of procurement and finance, for example. And with this, SFM can also act as a great data source for the Green Ledger. As the data from SFM can be made available in S4HANA and therefore within the Green Ledger at the receiving end. And keep that in mind for now, because later in this presentation, once we have a closer look at Green Ledger, we will come back to that. And what you see here is actually how the solution look like, looks like, right? So in the screenshot on the left hand side, you see um, a production step and what is being produced here is a chocolate cake. And then you also see all the ingredients or all the materials that are necessary in order to produce a chocolate cake, like the dark chocolate. And what you also see are the resource, is the resource usage. So what kind of activities are being carried out or what kind of assembly lines or ovens are being used in order to bake the cake? And you might wonder, okay, but how does SFM know that? what kind of material and how much of these materials is actually being required. Well, because we make use here of the, of the data elements in S4HANA, like the bill of material. So with the bill of material, we know exactly on how much raw material semi-finished goods are needed in order to produce a finished good. And we use this information in S4HANA or in ERP since decades, for example, to calculate standard cost of products where we also need to know, hey, how much of certain materials do I need in my manufacturing process? And now SFM does not only assign cost to this bill of material, we now can also assign CO2 values coming from various data sources. And also the activities or the resource usage is something we can get from S4HANA because in S4HANA we have a data or a business object which is called routing. And that routing contains all the activities necessary to produce a certain product. Again, this routing information is in your SAP ERP system since decades, as it is used like the bill of material to calculate standard cost. All these activities are valued with cost one hour of baking cost me, for example, 20 euros. And now with SFM, we can open up this information to also assign CO2E values. One hour of baking does cost me 40 euros and causes X amount of CO2. And then SFM uses this information to roll up the footprint of the produced products. And then on the right screenshot, you then can see that this information we can then actually distribute for material master data, etc. or move it into S4HANA to be used in procurement and finance processes. So now we have seen how companies can collect and structure sustainability data on product level. But let's, but let's elevate that and see how companies can actually analyze this data centrally in combination with other sustainability data, like information from social and or economic aspects. And therefore, let's have a look into the analytics layer and see how we can store, structure and analyze data centrally in a central key figure ledger 
a solution that we call Sustainability Control Tower. So SAP Sustainability Control Tower, or SCT in short, basically comes with three main capabilities. To record sustainability data, to report on the data, and eventually to act on the data. But let's start with the sustainability metric management on how we can leverage common predefined sustainability metrics, how we can extend them, and we can add our own custom metrics. Then we have a data sourcing and integration capability to load data from selected SAP sources uh, and to also integrate data from non-SAP sources, so to complement the data. So it basically helps to centralize sustainability data in one place to structure and enrich the data by missing, by missing information. For, for example, we can upload a just calculated product footprint information with SFM and enrich that or complete it with usage data to get a full view of the greenhouse gas protocol. With Sustainable Control Tower, we can aggregate, disaggregate, and extrapolate the information with a lightweight, uh, with a lightweight calculator, for example, also to calculate carbon intensities. But SAP SCT can further help to ensure audit safety by providing period and closing workflows, for example, to release data for consumption and, and reporting, which is especially um, uh, relevant when we think of disclosure activities, that we can lock the data and have a proper audit trail in place. On the reporting side, SCT comes with features for KBI tracking to visualize KBI performance or to create easy to consume management dashboards, including drill downs for more detailed analysis. So customers can analyze the data, find patterns and find actionable insights. Also benchmarking capabilities are on the roadmap. So to compare your sustainability performance with other companies. And moreover, we also plan to have simulation and forecasting features in place so that we can run scenario analysis with SCT, especially important when looking at TCFD, where the standard asks companies to run such scenarios and also to track their financial impact. And last but not least, SCT also plans to provide a kind of a sustainability initiative tracker or projects that you can then also track with KPIs to keep in control of the improvements resulting from these projects. And this is a screenshot how that looks like. A dashboard that shows greenhouse gas, how greenhouse gas emissions developed over time and how they are structured according to the greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas protocol like scope 1 and a scope 2 breakdown. It's important to note that the solution does not only work for climate-related data, but also for other sustainability categories like people or social or prosperity or economics KPIs. Especially important as we expect that policies and standards will soon go beyond climate, water and include other data points, like we already see in CSRD. So basically, Sustainability Control Tower provides the CFO and Marlene, a central platform to run analysis, forecast, simulation on sustainability data needed to take the lead in the company's transition into a sustainable enterprise. So basically, we want to provide Marlene or the finance department the same in-depth overview of data, processes and reports as they are used with financial data. And especially important as we are convinced that the CFO departments are predestined to lead the transformation of the industry. So, but now let's check how to convert these metrics and targets into sustainability risk and opportunities. And therefore, let's have a look at financial compliance management in SAP. So how can sustainability risk and opportunities get created and managed in SAP using the same procedures as with financial risk and opportunities, because that is what we do. We do not want to establish an, an own practice only for sustainability. We want to include the sustainability risk and opportunity management into the financial procedures. And what you see here is a basic schema from an SAP solution financial compliance manage, management or FCM in short. An FCM can be used to define, control and test financial risk and opportunities. So let's start by defining an objective on top of the slide here or a goal like scope 1 greenhouse gas emission reduction. 
And with this target, there are several risks associated, like reputational damage, if Marlene's enterprise is considered a big polluter, but there are of course a, a higher cost risk associated, as every ton of emitted CO2 might result in, uh, in uh, uh, the need to purchase emission allowance certificates. And eventually, there might be an employee churn risk associated. But companies can define their own risk and opportunities, and what you see here is only an example. But now, each of these risks can get so-called controls. And these controls contain a certain logic that checks the probability and the status of the risk. Like, if you want to reduce go one from one or reporting period to the other by 15%, these controls can check the data to conduct and see on how we are on this target. So you might wonder, okay, so where does the data come from in order to do those checks? Well, potentially from the just, just uh, talked about as sustainability control tower, where we have the data structured in periods. So we can compare period April, for example, against period May and see if the score one emissions are reduced by 15%. And if not, we can raise alerts. So we can manage and track all financial and sustainability risks that have an impact on finance in one solution and under one governance. Actually, that is exactly what ISSB is demanding in their current draft. So what you see here is actually a screenshot of financial compliance management. And you see, we can define certain risks here, like for example, uh, here a water risk. The status is that this risk is an assessment. So now we can we can define inherent risk, residual risk, or target residual risk, and we can see a total loss if, this, if, if a certain event occurs. Plus, we can define certain treatments or mitigations, which then result in an expected loss. So let's assume we have a plant in a certain area, and we know the risk that, or the probability that this plant gets hit by a severe flood in the next five years. Thanks to Esfahana, we can then understand what is the financial impact, for example, what is the asset value in this plant. But moreover, we can also understand what is the, the costing impact, what is the revenue impact if this plant gets out of operations. Based on this, we can then define treatment or mitigation actions in order to protect that plant or maybe even to move certain critical um, operations away from that plant. All of this can be managed in financial compliance management in one central risk storage together with our financial risks. So, but now, let's turn our attention to the fourth use case, the value aid, on how we can actually now bring sustainability. But now, Let's turn our attention to the fourth and last use case of this, uh, of this session, the value add part, how we can record and analyze carbon data together with financials. And now we also turn to the outlook for Marlene and with that we enter the third part of our session. What's next? And with that, we start looking at the data capturing layer again, because as I already said in the beginning, our Green Ledger resides in this layer. The Green Ledger is basically something we define as two modules, the Carbon Accounting Hub on the one side, plus the Carbon Subledgers. And as you see, the Carbon Accounting Hub is something we plan for the year of 2024. The Carbon Subledgers is already available in beta, but the general availability is also planned for next year. And what does this actually mean, bring carbon data in line with financial data. And let me try to explain this based on this picture here, right? So what you see on the top is a typical flow of financials. So we have a logistic process flow or a logistic resource consumption, which eventually results in a logistic receipt, a goods issue, a goods received, an invoice receipt, etc. And these logistic receipts, ha receipts have a finance representation with a finance journal entry. And a finance journal entry is posted into the general ledger and using the double bookkeeping principle, as it is indicated here. Electricity account, cost of sales account, and an admin account. So after we posted all of our journal entries, we then basically do the group reporting, which is then being used for internal as well as external reporting. 
But now let's flip this over. What does this mean for sustainability? And similar, or the same process steps that we now also have seen in the finance side, of course, also cause emission or natural resources. Like, for example, for each process step, we emit CO2. And the CO2 value or the CO2 received is something, for example, we can manage with sustainable footprint management. As I explained to you earlier, so for example, sustainable footprint management can track and record all the emissions coming from goods received that we receive from our suppliers. And this now can, with Green Ledger, result in a CO2 or in a Green Ledger journal entry. And that Green Ledger journal entry does not reside in the general journal, but in a green journal or the green ledger. And the idea is to take this green ledger entry and to post it onto the same accounts as we do it in finance and with the same valuation. So like you can see, 90% of the emissions go to cost of sales and 10% of the emissions go to admin. Because in finance we do the same. 50 thousand dollars of electricity cost go 45 to cost of sales and 5,000 to the admin and the same share is now also applied here for the emissions resulting from this electricity. And then we can bring this into sustainability control tower to group that and to take it into a central key figure ledger which then can be used for internal and external reporting. Why do we believe to bring this into a double bookkeeping principle is actually a good thing. First of all, because the double bookkeeping concept is established for centuries and it has some core advantages that we have for finance and that we now can also apply to sustainability. First of all, it's auditable. Secondly, because of the nature of double bookkeeping, it's very accurate. So not only can you trace the data, you can also post it more accurate. Then it's simple and it's a standard used globally. And we believe these four core elements will eventually build up trust in the sustainability data that we report. Because let's be honest, there is one thing that is lacking of the non-financial data today, and that is trust. Do we really trust the quality of the data of non-financials today? But if we can make trust an attribute of our sustainability data, we believe this will be a competitive advantage in the battle, in the global battle for investment capital. Because who do you do business with? First of all, companies you basically trust. But this was now a lot of theory. I think now it's also time for a demo to visualize you how all of this eventually will look and work like. And what you see here, you might recognize it from the earlier screenshot, is sustainability control tower. So we do have our emission structure under scope one, scope two, scope three, and also have a few on the total emissions. We also have some targets and see the performance against this target. Plus we see it in a graphical view on how the emissions evolve against the target that we have set ourselves. So we see on scope one, we are quite good, we are below the target and also for the others and also for the total emissions we are performing quite well, we are well below the target. But now let's drill one step deeper and jump from the SCT into our sustainability footprint management solution. And as you see here now on this left hand side, I would like to draw your attention to the CO2E for purchase goods. We are now here in an automotive company, so we are producing certain cars and we are purchasing certain materials. And not only do we see a total sum of scope 3, so now here we can see for the 3.1 emissions, the purchased goods and service emissions, on which of the materials we purchased actually has caused the most emission. And to no big surprise, it actually was the steel, so the roll sheet steel, which caused uh, here uh, roughly between oh, almost 22,000 ton of CO2. And now I would like to draw your attention to the left, to the right hand side for the CO2 from sold goods. And here we produce two, two products, a car and a greener car. Let's have a look at the footprint of the greener car in more detail. 
And again, here you see the production of a greener car that comes with 69,402 ton. And you see here the products and the resource usage. As I explained you earlier, this is now information which comes from S4HANA or comes from an ERP system um, from the bill of material. So where we know on how many, yeah, how many uh, uh, engines, okay, that's easy, we only need one, but how many of these materials we actually need in order to produce such a car. And we also see the footprint of these materials. As said, the footprint can come, you can type it in digitally, but you can also use our sustainability data exchange network that I used, uh, that I mentioned earlier, to share the, or uh, to retrieve the footprint from your suppliers directly in a secure network environment. Plus, we have the resource usage. In this example, we see that the car is being assembled using a car assembly line. And not only have we assigned the cost to that car assembly line, no, we also have assigned the footprint information. So for example, you know, on, uh, on, you know your energy supplier, you know the emission factor of your energy supplier, and from that you can extrapolate down, hey, if this assembly line runs for a day, what is actually not only the energy that consumes, but also eventually what is the resulting emissions from that. And this information is then rolled up into the car. And with SFM, you can move up and down the production line here. So I will now move one step up the production line and click here on the greener car. And here, we also then allocate heat emissions to the car. Might result from an inventory because in the end, if we produce a car, we drive it into an inventory and the inventory needs to be heated. So we can allocate the emissions resulting from the, in, uh, from the inventory to all cars that were produced in a certain period. Similarly, like today, we do it with overhead costs. So now we have the final result of the footprint of a car, which is 71,000 ton and 71,402 ton for the period of April 2023. One car is 7,140, but we produced 10,000 in, the, April of, uh, in, the, in the month of April, and that then results in the total footprint for the greener car. But this is actually where we now start to distribute the data into ERP. So here we have a publish button, so we can click this publish button and now we say yes, let's distribute the footprint. So now we make this footprint available for consuming applications. And one consuming application is planned to be the Green Ledger. Because Green Ledger has now the capability to take this data and to post this data using the same posting logic as we do for financials, now also for sustainability. So you see here, once we produce a car, we post a cost of goods sold or a cost of good manufactured account against the finished inventory. And now we have the CO2 information at hand to also assign this to these accounts. So to move the CO2 entries into a double bookkeeping um, concept. Plus what we also do, moving that now into finance, we also gain all the financial attributes like profit center, like company codes, like segments, etc. And this green journal entry is something we can post into the previously mentioned Carbon Accounting Hub, for example. And this can eventually move us into a situation where we not only can analyze the performance of our financials, in parallel, we can also analyze the performance of our emissions in one report. And that has, we believe, a huge potential to transform the way on how we do enterprise performance management. Because towards the financial performance, we move the additional dimension on the impact of sustainability. We not only have this graphically, we can also have this in a contribution margin uh, table here. Uh, you see the, um, the operating income, which is resulting from the net revenue minus the operating expenses. We see the expenses for materials, we see the expenses for labor and also the overhead. That's something that we haven't financed since many, many decades. But now on the level, thanks to this Green Ledger journal entry that we just saw, we can now also bring the CO2 emissions. So we see our overhead, uh, our overhead emissions, the 2000 um, emissions that we allocated to the greener car. We know because of the 3.1 view that you saw on SFM, 
what is actually the 3.1 emissions that we have, not only the, um, the material consumption, but also the 3.1 consumption, for example. So eventually we can bring the emissions on the same or similar granularity as we have it for finance. And that opens us huge possibilities. So for example, we could simulate what it means to switch from a certain material. So to, for example, to, to switch from conventional rolled sheet steel to green sheet steel. What will be the impact on our financial result? What will be the impact on our emissions? What does it mean for us if we, if we source out certain, uh, certain manufacturing steps into, uh, to, towards suppliers? What will we gain financially? What will we gain from an emission point of view? All of this will be possible thanks to the Green Ledger. And that is the basic idea that we are following here. So now let's come back to our presentation. And I hope this little demo gave you a more hands-on experience or a more hands-on impression what is actually our plan with Green Ledger. And what does and how does it fit into the already existing sustainably controlled tower and sustainability footprint management capability. And now let's start and go to the last section. So the what's next and what are some practical tips that I can give you. And from our customer experience we see so far, there is no one approach towards the path to the Green Ledger. Different customers have different maturity levels. We have customers that are already quite advanced in structuring and modeling their sustainability data and also reporting it. And their next step is to bring it into a product related view. So their next step could be sustainable footprint management. But we also see customers that actually still, still look for sustainable data in their enterprise as it is scattered around the enterprise in various different uh, databases and try to manage that in one central place. For them, the sustainable, footprint man uh, the sustainable control tower might be the perfect step. Or you might think, hey, I have my data already structured. The next step I would like to do is to bring this into a risk and opportunity perspective. So many possibilities based on the individual customer situation. But one recommendation stays. Try to get it into a phased approach. Think about step number one, based on where or where your customer already uh, at the moment is. And then think about a step number two. So which will then eventually, in this example here that you see, which is actually a real customer example, which eventually then brings you into step number three, the implementation of the Green Ledger once it is available. So don't wait for the Green Ledger. Start your journey now, prepare the data now, get your data in structure, that once the Green Ledger is available, you can eventually take the last step and bring it into a finance perspective. And I think now it's time, as now I've talked so much in this session, to let one of our customers talk. And therefore, I would like to introduce you to Salzgitter AG. The Salzgitter AG is a German steel manufacturer that has embarked onto the journey of a sustainable enterprise together with us from SAP. So they implemented the EHS portfolio, they're implementing sustainability footprint management as well as sustainability control tower. But let's hear from them about their experience and their ambitions with SAP. With the current way of producing steel, we're contributing to the CO2 footprint of Germany with uh, roughly 1%, which is 8 million tons. So that for sure is an issue we have to tackle. Well, Saskita is one of the largest European steel makers. We have a long history in producing steel. I'm truly passionate about sustainability and redefining the way we do our business from a line kind of approach towards a circular approach. And we have a clear path to decarbonize our way of producing steel. In order to make that a success, you need strong partners. You need partners like SAP alongside with us to support us in getting us there. It's cool to say by now that yes, we're gonna make it. Our SAP S4 HANA transformation program have major goals. We can build on this with SAP product footprint management, SAP environment health and safety management, and SAP sustainability control tower, leveraging SAP S4 HANA data and business logic to gain insight into our environmental data. This gives us the ability to drive more innovations on SAP S4 HANA. I think that partnership that we have here enables sustainable change towards a sustainable future. 
ultimately it's about the two companies having the shared goal of a sustainable world that we're going to create together. And with that, I would also like to thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, if you have questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. And I wish you a nice remaining day and hopefully talk and see you soon.